Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. Let's meet your hosts, Chris Angel and Michael Mayer. Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Referrals Podcast. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, and I'm your, your host, as always, Michael J. Mayer. And our guest today, Craig Valentine. Hello, Craig. Hello, Michael. Hey, how you doing? Good, man. Good. Michael, hello, sir. Hello. hello. We got CA and we got CB on the, <laughs> on the, it's, it, it's going to be all good, right? So good. I'll tell you what, here's the thing. Ha, has anybody ever here had like a perfect day? You know what I mean? Like we have all these listeners, they're from all over the world. And it's like, I'm guessing at least one had to like have a perfect day. And I'm not talking about when you were like five years old and your dad took you to Disney World and you went to all the things. And that night before you went to sleep, you whispered to your dad, best day ever, right? But, but I want you to think back to those days when you were a kid and you told your dad, best day ever, or you told your mom, best day ever, or you thought to yourself, best day ever. What if every day was like the best day ever? Like what if every day was a perfect day? And what if you had a guy who could help you create the perfect day because he has the perfect day formula? Would that be cool? That'd be amazing. Yeah, so, so uh, Craig Ballantyne's in the house and he wrote, he didn't just talk about the perfect day formula. The guy wrote the perfect day formula. Craig Ballantyne, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thank you so much. You're welcome. So Walk us through the perfect day. I mean, I want to dive right in, Michael. I mean, uh, you wrote this book uh, a couple of years ago, yeah, Craig? Yeah, I definitely did. And it really helps people live, live their potential, you know, live their purpose and their potential and leave their legacy. That's what perfect days are all about in my world. How did it yeah. start? Like, how did it start? I'm curious. Was there like a, some sort of origin story to the book? Why did you decide to write that book? Well, I had anxiety attacks back in 2006, and I realized I need to get more structure in my day because what I found, it's a bit ironic, but I found that the more structure you have, the more true freedom you have in your life. So I helped myself and I helped a whole bunch of other people put the right structure in their day so they dominate the day, get more done, and move ahead towards whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, 100%, right? So, but, but the thing is, is, oh my gosh, this bridge between, are you telling me more structure leads to more freedom. I mean, most people never get over the whole thought of more structure. You know, it's like they feel like they're putting themselves into jail, right? If they actually time block an hour, you know? <laughs> so, so what are the, what, what makes up a perfect day? What are the components? How do we, how do we build the, the perfect day? Is this Listen, time blocking? Is this town? No, no, no. The, the most important, the most, the most important thing about building a perfect day is knowing what matters to you. And when you know what matters, then you will make time for what matters because you don't find time for what matters. You got to make time for it. And then you're able to get everything done that you want to do in the day to move ahead, your business, your career, whatever it is that you want. And then you also make time for what matters at night, which is your family, your friends, your health, your hobbies. So that's the perfect day is when you're moving ahead in all the areas of life that matter to you. So, so give me an example, right? So coach me on this, right? Sure. So, so, so let's say you're a, you're a mompreneur, you're a mompreneur. You well, want I'm, to... I'm a dadpreneur. Does that qualify? Of course it does. Course it does. So, <laughs> so, so coach me on this, help me out. Right. Okay. So, so you want to spend time with, what are your, how old are your kids? I have a 10 year old named Max. 10 year old named Max. You want to have great time with Max. You want to have, you want Max every night to whisper into your ear best day ever even if it was just you know you and him going to the ballpark you know for his little league game or whatever it is that he does you know and you want to have that quality time most dadpreneurs mompreneurs they want to have that quality time with their kids but you know what you got a to-do to -do list that can be a mile long mm -hmm. if you don't have the boundaries in place to be able to say no to what doesn't matter you say yes to what does matter in your business and you also, I have a, a little concept that I take people through called time journaling. And when you do time journaling, you identify the time of day when you're most productive, most creative, and most energetic. And you, you do block that time. 
It's not just blocking any time, but it is blocking your magic time. So mm -hmm. that you become three times more productive than any other time of day. And you don't have to work 12 hours in order to get all this stuff done when you work correctly. So you, uh, the way that I explained in the perfect day formula is control what you can, you cope with what you can't, and you concentrate on what counts. You control your morning because you can control your morning more than anything else. You cope with the chaos of the world in the afternoon by having systems in place to deal with other people's emergencies. And then you concentrate on what counts at night, which is you've done your work in your business. Michael, you've moved ahead and you have time for max at night. And that's what the perfect day is going to be for the dadpreneur like yourself. Well, I absolutely love that, right? So mm -hmm. control the morning, cope with the chaos, and then yep. concentrate on what matters most at night. Absolutely. Basically. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, what's so I think before I even go to like mornings, right? I mean, you and I are probably going to have a very interesting conversation here in a moment about mornings. Uh, so before we get into that though, is so do, am I scheduling my, my magic time for my family, friends, uh, health and, uh, kid, right? Or is magic time a productivity it's a work time, time? It for, is a work for, time. For business. Okay. Work time right. only. Yep. We'll yep. talk it's more about magic time. Creative though. and productive and energetic than at any other time of the day. And you simply have to block that off from any distractions. Most people, yeah. unfortunately, they, they let too many distractions come into their lives and they never get around to working on what really matters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because what I do, right, is, is I help business owners build businesses based on love, generosity, and appreciation. And in many cases, that leads to the event-based business model that I teach and preach, right? I mean, that's it right there in a nutshell. And you talked about legacy, right? And, and living a, a life of legacy. And, and people don't want a legacy of 2017 number one salesperson, right? They don't want that etched on their tombstone, you know? They want a legacy of love, generosity, and appreciation. And it's like, why, why aren't your work times uh, aligned with, with what, how you want to be remembered with your legacy? How do you, how do you help your, the, the entrepreneur um, kind of live a life of love, generosity, and appreciation? How do you, how do you help them uh, go from, all right, here's what matters to me. Now what? Like, do you just tell them, hey, listen, put it in your nightly ritual, put it in your morning ritual, put it in your magic time, or, or what's next, right? And I'm genuinely curious about this because this is so in alignment. Yeah, so the very first thing that we do is we ask, you know, what are, what are the things that you want to achieve for your top values in life in the next 10 years, for your family, your health, your wealth, and for your personal experiences? And with those answers, we can then build out somebody's day because we can then build out the next thing we do is we build out somebody's vision. Okay, what's the vision for your business and your personal life for the next three years? Okay, they tell me where they want to live, what they, you know, what they want to achieve in their business, what they want to do, their family rituals and routines and the trips and the travel that they want to take. And now they just painted this picture, this movie script for their life. And we can say, okay, if you want to accomplish these things, here's how your day needs to look in order for you to grow your business at this rate and in order for you to accomplish these personal things, these, you know, to take care of your health and to take care of your family and to spend time with your family and achieve these trips that you want to take. And, and then it's just a simple, very simple matter of building out how their day needs to look in order for them to get the most done. And so everything's taken into account on a personal customized level. We don't say, yeah, you have to join the 5 a.m. club. I think the 5 a.m. club is ridiculous for a lot of people. But we need to figure out when are they going to be most productive and also who they need on their team to support them and probably most importantly, what they need to stop doing. Mm. I work with a lot of mompreneurs and they, they try and take on the world on their shoulders. They think they have to cook every meal. They have to clean the house every week. They have to do this, that, and the other thing, you know, because their, their mother-in-law will give them a hard time if they don't. And the thing is, that's not what they were put here to do. And so we, now we have videos in our and cameras in our house. Are you, are do you, are you tapping into those? I'm just wondering if, if this is a, uh, we need to bring Sherry on the show because uh, this is, this is perfect. She does so, too much work. Does she? Yeah. So, so tell us about mornings, right? Morning and the morning ritual. 
Uh, we are a, a big believer in, in at, at a high level, the helicopter level, I, I do a lot of training on launch ritual, landing ritual, right? So launch ritual, landing ritual for anything, right? So if you're like your magic time, I in court, you know, it's like, all right, what's your launch ritual into your magic time? What's your landing ritual when you're finished, right? And same thing with your work day. I have a, a you know, a launch ritual and then a landing ritual. And then for your full day, right? Launch ritual is your morning ritual and your landing ritual is your nightly ritual, right? And, and then for your week, right? You want a launch ritual, which is Sunday night ritual. And then you want a landing ritual Friday at five or six or whenever you're finished, right? And it's like, I, I'm so intrigued by, I love control the mornings, right? So, so why, you know, why are the mornings so important? And, and what are you helping people when it comes to the morning ritual? So the morning is most important because research shows, and, and Daniel Pink has a book about this, it's called When, the Scientific Time for Doing Everything. And he, and he talks about in the morning, we have the greatest willpower, discipline, and intention, which is kind of messed up because we need, we need more willpower, discipline, and intention later on in the day. Right. Uh, you know, and the thing is, we, you know, for example, like, when do we have chocolate cake? We have chocolate oh, cake at night. You went there. When dude, have- I was just thinking, like, my <laughs> breakfast is nails, dude. Turkey burger, egg whites, four little tomatoes. My lunch is kind of nails, right? I get the grilled chicken salad, but I sometimes tweak on the, on the dressing, right? And then dinners, e- okay. And then, like, where's the chocolate? <laughs> Right. So it's like, so the, the willpower is, is waning. Right. So it goes down when, when, when you the, do temptation the chocolate cake, the answer should be never, but it's usually midnight. I'm just throwing it out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what we do is we, we need to do something big in the morning and you've heard the old phrase, you know, Brian Tracy had a book called this. You got to eat that frog, right? You got to eat that frog first thing in the morning. As Mark Twain said, if you have two frogs, you got to eat the biggest one first. That's right. And, and again, it doesn't matter about the hour that you're getting up and doing this stuff. What matters is what you do with the hours that you are up. And if, if that's the way that most of us are programmed, that we have the greatest potential for doing the hardest work early in the morning or early in the day, not mm-hmm. necessarily the morning, then you have to do it. You have to do it. Cause I know, I know for myself that it gets harder and harder to do the big things as you go on. And it's very difficult for most people, just the way our lives are set up, you know, the day gets busy with family and stuff and Netflix and, and maybe a drink or two in the evening and all that stuff you were going to do as a night owl, you know, quote unquote, you never get around to doing. So you got to do the thing in the morning. So can I share with you a testimonial on that, right? Yeah. So I teach on the, the morning ritual all the time, launch ritual, landing ritual. January of this year, I incorporated one tweak to my morning ritual, which was actually like things I wasn't doing enough. Well, I, I probably read enough, but so I incorporated a very simple walk in the morning, right? So I needed to get healthy. And, and so I do a walk in the morning and I do, I listen to podcasts or audiobooks while I'm walking and I'm down at this moment, I believe I'm down 30, almost 30 pounds. So 27 pounds. And, and the, like you said, is, is it's like, well, I'll work out at three. No, <laughs> you won't, right. It's just like, I could work out anytime I want. That was the problem. Right. right. So, <laughs> but it's like as simple as a walk in the morning. I also noticed I got around better during the day, um, but I also noticed that I was more accountable to the food because I re- because of the walk. The walk was a reminder of my pursuit of health, and and so guess what? I stayed accountable, uh, you know, throughout the day better because of a literally. I don't walk. I used to not walk very long. I, you walk for thirty minutes. Now I'm up to like fifty to sixty minutes. But it's, it's one of those where it's, it's one simple tweak to the morning. Exactly what you talked about is that you don't have the time or you don't have the willpower or you don't, you know, these things that you think you're going to do, like reading for a lot of people, you know, get it done in the morning, right? Conquer in the morning. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Craig, walk me through the, f- you have five pillars. You have success. What are the five pillars of success? Yeah, so the five pillars of success kind of carry on from what you were talking about there, which is the transformation you, you are undertaking. And so I spent a lot of time in the health and fitness world for over 12 years. I was selling online fitness programs. and We ran people through these transformations for 10 years. 
And they would write this little essay at the end of the transformation and tell me like, hey, you know, I lost 30 pounds over the 12 weeks and here's what helped me. And I realized that the people who eventually we, we let people uh, vote and win the contest and the people who won the contest had five things in place. They had better planning and preparation than ever before. They had professional accountability, which is, you know, a coach essentially or a mentor. They had positive social support, which means they had cheerleaders in their life. They're around like-minded people. And then they had a meaningful incentive. Um, you know, one thing I realized over time was that I was paying, you know, I was giving out cash money for people to win this contest. And yet 80% of people would drop out and I couldn't understand it. They want to lose weight and I'm paying them to lose weight. Why does everybody drop out? And it's because the money wasn't meaningful. But when somebody said, I want to have more energy for my kids, I want to be around when they graduate college, that was meaningful and helped them stick to it uh, through the tough times. And then the fifth pillar is something that just, you know, without it, we don't get started and we don't finish strong. And that fifth pillar is the big deadline. So when you have those five things in place, you can transform not just your own physical health, but you can transform any aspect of your life, whether it's becoming a great speaker, a great salesperson, or simply becoming a better father and mother. Let's get ready for referrals. In the red corner, we have the average agent working by advertising, learning on the fly, no systems, no profit, and no clients. And in the blue corner, we have what could be you, the profitable agent working by referral, loving life and loving their clients. Take your business to the next level and go to www.callwithcoach.com and set up your free referral coaching session. Go now, change your business forever. www.callwithcoach.com Have you read Change or Die by Alan Deutschman at all? I have not, no. I'll tell you what, you may want to check out Change or Die. First of all, you've referenced Daniel Pink, who uh, is one of my favorite authors. I've had the chance to share the stage with him a few times. And and he's right in line with to sell as human, right? And and selling through love, generosity, and appreciation and, and not being the hardcore closer. And um, Alan Deutschman with Change or Die studies people that have just had heart surgery or just found out they got cancer or they just found out that they, you know, if they don't quit smoking, then they're going to die soon, right? And it's like only 12% of the people actually change, even with that type of odds, right? It's like you talk about the big important deadline, you know, it's like the deadline is death, right? Okay. And if you don't quit, then, then you're going to die. And, and what's interesting about that is he, he, many people study the 88%, right? And, and figure out, okay, why are these people dying? How do we prevent them from dying? How do we cure lung cancer or how do we cure whatever it is? And instead he studied the 12%. And he studied the 12% of the people who, who were successful. And he found there were commonalities of those, of those 12%, which have, they fit very much in alignment with a couple of cool tweaks I think you're going to like with your five pillars of success. And by the way, I absolutely love your five pillars. Of, I've read 2,500 books plus and very well versed on all these things. I love the five pillars of success. I, I love how you laid them out. I love uh, in thinking of all those things. It's like they're in perfect alignment with when I've seen transformational change, both from my coaching clientele and myself. So I love that. I love it. And I love the deadline, right? I mean, a, so a goal without a deadline is just a wish, right? Yeah. 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 The deadline gets you going, it keeps you going and it makes you go faster the closer it comes. Mm. Yeah. And, and, how can you set a weekly, I'll tell you something that really supercharged my effort when it came to losing weight and getting into shape is that I have a baseball game every Sunday that I play in, right? I signed up for this baseball league and the first few weeks, you know, this was me on Monday. Like, I, you know, I couldn't move, you know, now I wake up Monday and, and I'm not even sore, you know? So it's, it's, uh, I like how, you know, that having that deadline, having that goal, that, that important thing every Sunday, right? Absolutely. Um, love that. I feel like a lot of the stuff we're talking about can result in, in habits. I think a lot of people around um, success or transformation talk about habits, but Craig, you've got a, you've got a distinction there in terms of like rules are better than habits. What does that mean? Well, a rule is a, uh, like a principle by which you live your life. And so you think about, think about something that you will never miss, that you always do. 
Like, you know, for example, my mom, she goes to church every Sunday. That's a rule. That's a ritual. That's, that's mm -hmm. not a habit. It's mm -hmm. something like that's ingrained in her identity. And, and Michael, I'm sure you, have you read Atomic Habits by James oh, yeah. Clear? Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, his, his stuff is not, it's like, it's not really about habits or goals. It's about identity. Rituals. Yeah. And, and yeah. to the point where it becomes your identity, mm, right? It absolutely. is like a professional athlete doesn't have to be reminded to go work out. Right. Mm. They, they, it is, it is like go work out and then, and then do the rest of your day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have some great emails I've gotten about like uh, Dansby Swanson who plays for the Braves. It's like, what's your typical day like? Right. And he, at first he was having trouble writing it down because it's so his identity is so ingrained that he didn't had never thought about what he was doing. Right. Whereas the habit is kind of like you're thinking about what you're doing and then eventually you, you absorb it and it becomes part of your identity. Right. Yeah. So, so it's, it's one of those where uh, it's just, it's just interesting that he never thought of, he was like, Oh yeah, then I work out. And then I do that, you know, it, he'd never really reflected upon it. And it was, it was just more of his identity or rule, if you will, or ritual than it was even a habit. Yeah. How does it become a, how does it become a rule, Craig? How do you move it there? It, it's it, again, it comes back to the values and vision. It's like, Hey, what, what really matters to me? What do I want my life legacy to be? Like, for example, I have a, I have a rule that I want to be a British gentleman, polite and courteous at all times. So I don't curse, you know, I quit cursing in four days, almost 10 years ago. And, you know, unless that's it's effing awesome, Craig, yeah. I just want you to know that that's <laughs> effing awesome. We don't cuss on here either. So yeah. that's, uh, that's, you know, uh, you know, cause I, I realized I never would curse in front of my mom and I never cursed on stage, but you know, as soon as I would get off stage, I could curse and you're like, listen, I, I can, I can take full control of it. I mean, I curse in my head uh, quite a bit, but um, you know, never, never uh, out loud. And so, it's because this is how I want to be. You know, this is the persona, the identity that I have. And then that becomes, okay, then this is a rule. This is a rule. And, and another example, like people are having a hard time getting this. I use a, an, a little story at the start of my book. I talk about, okay, if two people are going to a, a, you know, a cookout or something, or even a birthday party, and, you know, both of them want to lose 30 pounds. And, you know, Joe is going there and Mary is going there. And they go there and then the host shoves cheeseburgers in their face. Mm -hmm. Now, Joe is going there on willpower and discipline alone. He goes, no, 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 I'm trying to lose weight. But Mary, she's a vegetarian. So she doesn't even have to use willpower or discipline there, right? Point, because yeah. that's her identity. I'm a vegetarian. You can put all the hamburgers in front of my face and I will not eat them because mm -hmm. I don't eat hamburgers. But Joe will be like, yeah, you know, the first time he'll say no, the second time he'll be like, ah, and then the third time he gives in, he eats two cheeseburgers, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the difference between rules and habits. And it's very similar to, you know, all the stuff that Michael talked about before. Yeah. It's just, it's the identity. And it makes, it requires so much less discipline when you yeah. have rules in place. That's so good. I love that because I feel like, Michael, you know, when we talk about like biz business uh, advice, a lot of times hustle, discipline, right. like I think that's, I think that drum has been beaten a ton and I, and I love this distinction because it's, it's different. It's like, you're right. When it's identity, you don't have to use discipline and willpower. It just How about this who one? I am. Yeah, exactly. No pain, no gain. Who the hell, uh, heck, excuse me. Thank you. I'm already working on it. I'm just, I just, <laughs> I just who the heck ever said no pain, no gain. Right. I mean, first of all, that's not a great weight room mantra whatsoever. Right. I mean, that, that no pain, no gain. It, it, listen, it's, it's, you don't want pain because it'll prevent your gains. Right. If there's pain then it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's not going to work out. Right. It's not going to be a game. Same thing with the, you know, business world it is no pain, no gain. No, well, that is, I, why are you identifying with this? There's gotta be pain to gain. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's, it's like, we need to think of something else. Right. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, better ways of doing that. things and you yeah. discovered a lot of them, right? Yeah. That's what I love that. Talk to me about um, seasons of life for a minute. You have this uh, phrase of seasons of life. What is that? What is that? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I got it from a friend of mine, this pastor, his name is Luci, Luciano Del Monte. And he was talking mm -hmm. about, Hey, listen, Craig, everybody has these seasons of life we go through and you can either be in the season of family or health or wealth or personal enrichment and personal enrichment would be like charity and volunteer work. Now, of course, we're all kind of like moving between each one, but we all have a main focus. So when, you know, when Max came along, you know, for the first year, 
you know, you were growing your business and stuff, but the season of, of life you were going through was season of family because mm -hmm. the most important thing was, was, was Max. And for the years before that though, you know, when you're, when you're, you know, trying to build your business and, you know, be financially set to, to support, you know, your family, you're been of the season of wealth building. And then, you know, right now you might be in a bit of season of health because it's like, oh man, you know, I sacrificed for the family. I sacrificed for the business, uh, kind of put the health off to the side. I'm going to make that pr the priority. So whatever season you're in kind of becomes the priority and will shift a little bit of your day to day and, and perfect, perfect day formula so that you focus on what really matters. Hmm. Well, I can uh, see that being, um, depending on what season you're in, I could see wanting to create new rules mm -hmm. uh, based on that season too. Like just pairing yeah, There's a little bit things. of ebb and flow into everything. Um, and, and you yeah. know, they're not hard. It was like, oh, well, I'll just ignore my family because I'm in season of wealth. It's not exactly what we mean, but there's right, right. always going to be something that yeah. is going to take a little bit of precedence over everything else. And when you understand that, then you can modify your commitment to certain other things. Like, for example, I coach a lot of gym owners, a lot of gym owners. And gym owners, you know, they've had this identity for a long time, very much like your baseball playing friend, that, you know, working out is a normal thing and being in, you know, whether it's triathlons or Tough Mudders or fitness competitions, that's a, that was a part of them for a long time. And it's hard for them to realize, like, okay, now you have a business and you have a young family you're not in that world anymore and you got to let it go. And that's another way of looking at these seasons mm -hmm. of life and realize that sometimes things, not only we talked about some things have to go to the forefront, sometimes things have to go to the, the back burner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. Good. I love yeah. that. I love the seasons of life. And uh, you know, I, I did this presentation for a while. There was this always, there, there's been this like success versus significance, right? Go from success to significance. And, and I'm a believer in success and significance, right? Where it's, you don't have to, you don't have to give up what you did to become successful to then become significant, right? What if, what if every day was about wealth building and also significance building, right? Legacy building yeah. and, and how you just incorporate this into your business, right? It, it's, it's success. And it's, it's kind of like the old one where it's like, you know, I either win or learn. Well, that I hate that. I freaking hate that because it's why can't we win and learn? You know, it, it and it's one of those where, you know, I've I've seen it too often that when somebody wins, they they don't learn. They they shut it down. Well, you know, we won the game, so I don't have to learn this new, this different, this this better. And I've seen this this in youth baseball a ton where it's like, you know, they just happen to hit a little bit better or pit but they're not working on their pickoff moves. Somebody stole like 11 bases on them and, and they're, you know, it's like, yeah, but we won, you know, but it's like, no, you, you know, this is something we got to work on. And, and I've seen the opposite where, you know, people lose enough. They just shut down learning, right? They're thinking, mm -hmm. well, what use is it? I'm i uh, I'm going to give up. And uh, it, it's one of those where it's like, let's, let's, let's win and learn, right? Let's not just lose from the losses. Let's not have to lose to, to win. Yeah. You know, Craig, leave us with like uh, on that heels of that, Michael, Craig, leave us with some thoughts on like if people want to win, like they're they're They know there's room to grow in their in how they win their day. They're wanting to win at a higher level. Like where do people start with this perfect day? Like how do they get momentum on this? Well, you know, the, one of the most important things that we do in in the entire plan is we you know, you talked about weekly planning and, and you know, we do ours Sunday morning. You do your Sunday evening. It's all generally all the same. And it's just you have to plan in advance. We, it, a very major argument I make in my book is that successful people are proactive and reactive people are just going to struggle and they're going to wonder why they're spinning their wheels. So we have to get as proactive as possible. I'm a really big fan of quarterly planning, building out the next 90 days for your business, uh, you know, around the strategy, around the big actions, the big rocks. And then breaking it down into how can I get the fastest victories as possible. So it's not just thinking, oh, here's all we need to do in 90 days, but here's what we need to do in the next 24 hours, 72 hours, seven days, et cetera, so that it becomes clear and we can see the path to get there and we can get quick victories, which gives you momentum and motivation. And when you've got that, everybody keeps on going, even through the tough times. So 
those are some of the ways that people listening can get those breakthroughs and start, you know, building those perfect days that get them to the legacy they want. So good. Craig, if people want to learn more about what you do, reach out to you, uh, buy your book, how do people connect with you? Yeah. So we can get my book at freeperfectdaybook.com. Just pay a little shipping and handling to grab that, a copy of that book. And then I'm old school. I like my email. So if you ever want to email me, it's Craig at godfather.com. And you just, you know, ask me your questions about your perfect day. I'm happy to help. Awesome. What was your email again? Craig at godfather.com. G-O-D-F-A-T-H-E-R.com. Yeah. That's like amazing. the Godfather? Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Like one of the great- my, my business partner used to buy and Say sell. hello to my little friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah, my Craig, business partner used to buy and sell domain names. And one day somebody working for that company let wow. it expire and they probably don't have a job anymore. No wow. way. And, yeah. and that's awesome. And they're, and talk about your anti-cussing crusade. <laughs> There's like 226, uh, like F bombs dropped in that movie, you know? <laughs> oh, so uh, I love the godfather.com. It'd be interesting to see what you're, you're going to do with that down the road. We don't, we don't do anything with it. Yeah. I love the, I love the, uh, I love the proactive versus the reactive, right? So many people in life are, are so reactive, you know, and, and they get frustrated. And I say, all right, here's the deal. Anytime you get frustrated, I just want you to ask yourself one question. Could this have been avoided with planning and preparation, right? Just, if, just ask yourself that when you're super, you can't find your keys or you're running late or you're super frustrated, just could this have been avoided with planning and preparation? If the answer is yes, then, then incorporate that somewhere earlier in your day or have a place for it or have a system for it, right? And it's, it's I love the system of the perfect day formula and uh, we'd love to have you down the road. Are you open to coming on again uh, sure. down the road and, and sharing uh, you know, maybe some specific stories from, from people who have gone through the perfect day formula and that you've helped gym owners. We have a lot of gym owners who love referrals and they're, you know, the, the biggest transition for them is, is they go from the training world and the workout world to, to an entrepreneur, which has nothing to do with training. You know, it's, it's about having trainers and it's about having a gym versus being the gym trainer, you know? So uh, I love that. I love that. This is the referrals podcast, right? So <laughs> That's I'd, right. Love to, I'd love to brainstorm more on that uh, live on the air and have some fun with it. Perfect. Well, Craig, thanks for being on the show today. Uh, you guys listening, you can always go to referralspodcast.com for all the goodies um, there. And uh, until next time, Michael, see ya. Awesome. Thanks.